for my card today I will be using stamps by Lavinia as well as the acetate circle mask and the hill the hill mask um, these these sets are really good and today for this card that I've shown you I'm using the largest circle mat, uh, acetate mask and I shall be using both both sections of it because it has it comes with like a frame very difficult for me to show you and the inner cut out so I shall be using that and the one of the hill masks as well there's another three of those in that <coughs> pardon me in that set um, I'll also be using some distress ink so this one is dried marigold and this one is spiced marmalade and then I'm using the distress oxide in fossilized amber and pumice stone I'm also using two of the elements so this one is a uh, russet orange and sun dance I'm stamping in versifying Claire nocturne which is a really good stamp and the stamp sets I'll be using are the Toad Lodge, the Slender Mushrooms, we've well, not put the name on that one, that was a bit naughty wasn't it, the Tree of Dreams and the Fairy Path. Sorry about that, I rectified that, so and the Bumble Lodge. Both of these uh, dwellings, I absolutely find them really, really useful for so many different things. Um, and then there's the fairy path as well. I don't, can't remember. And the, um, they all go together really well. And um, I find that the, they make a nice scene put together. I will also be using my stamp press, which fair enough stamping platform, which is a Tim Holtz one, Patty Sells, The Misty. They all, like I said in another of the previous videos, they all work the same. So either or will do. And then to create the card, I'm using a piece of the Multifarious, which this time I got the using one from the multi pack, and I'm using the seven by seven, and then I'm putting it onto a base card of my of my own from my own stash that measures 8 inches by 8 inches so that will be going on the finished card this video may finish up in two halves two parts because it's quite there's quite a bit to it and I want to just be able to explain the detail as I go along right let's see if I can zoom you in a little so starting with one of the uh, what I call the hill mass and I like to do, I don't like the lines to be straight across. I like mine to go slightly at an angle because nothing in nature is ever straight. Well, not in my world, it isn't anyway. And I'm going to use an oxide, so I need a brush that I keep just for the oxides. So well, these are some brushes that I have in my stash. Preferably really soft bristled brushes are the best. But you can of course use anything that you use yourself. You can use the foam bits or uh, foam pads or anything that you, that you use. Right, I'm just dabbing a bit of this ink off. And I'm just going along the edge. It is quite a light colour so maybe it doesn't need dabbing off quite so much. Some people use these masks the other way and they, they use them from the top facing down. This just is the, the way that I tend to use it. And hopefully you can see you get in a line of looks like disturbed, disturbed um, ground. Um, so now using exactly the same mask but not in the same place. Like I don't want that that raised bit to, to go in line with the next raised bit because to me that wouldn't be what you want either and I tend to want to have a, a raised section towards the right hand side so doing exactly the same thing 
little circle um, circle movement along the mask gives the illusion of land I'm not going to do too much more of that for this card sometimes I would do a lot higher up but this time I don't want to do that because it um, it would for what else I've got to fit in it wouldn't be right so I just need to find a cloth and I'm just going to wipe the excess ink off my mask so that when I use it again it's not all full of ink So now, I'm going to concentrate on my moon mask. And I'm going to place it roughly where I want it to be. But at the same time, I'm going to take my Tree of Dreams stamp. So the printed acetate sheet that comes with it is absolutely fantastic for placing where you want things to be so for now I want this to be so that it's coming slightly off the pa the paper and I want it to be so that because I'm adding a dwelling after that's quite tall I want this to be quite seam lower so I'm having the bottom edge on the edge of the card and the right hand side off the card and I'm going to um, just have it that just part of the tree will be visible in the moon so I know now I can alter my moon to roughly where I want it and to be honest that seems to be as good as anywhere so I'll remove that for the time being and I'm going to use the elements so I'm going to start with the palest one first which was the um, Sundance now I will admit these are extremely extremely juicy so I have dabbed some off and again going round in your round circles Keep going, trying to blend it as much as you can. You will be going over with the other colour, so it won't really matter quite so much. Right, I'll leave that for now. And I'll get the other one, which is the Russet Orange. I'm taking me another brush that sort of has that different colour for the different colour. You could probably still use the same brush for this to be honest but being as I have some I thought I'd use a different one. When you look at the, uh, well no you're not allowed to look at the sun, but when you see the sun from a, a way off it's never ever all sort of just one solid colour and looks to have sunspots and all bits of stuff coming off. So. And I think it just gives a little bit of um, design to the moon as well, the moon, the sun. It makes it look like it's got a bit of character. So I'm going to leave that as that for now. And I'll just wipe up that. Normally I would use wipe some uh, a, a wet cloth to wipe that. Ooh, now then, look at that sun. That's a lovely beautiful sun isn't it? So you've used that part of the mask and just keep it to one side now. So now you bring in the actual circle and place it over the top like so. Now then, now we want to go with the ordinary distress oxides, uh, dress, distress inks. These can be mixed around with the um, in your brushes 
the the oxides like one brush per one color the 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 other ordinary ones are not so fussy so again i'm starting with my lightest color which is dried marigold and hold your mask down your mask down and go around this brush has been used quite a bit so it's, I've actually had to uh, put some tape on it because it's actually as you can see it's actually broken at one stage so I have to be a bit careful with it really <laughs> it feels like it's a bit like it wants to break underneath my hands but it's a good sized brush and I just don't want to throw it away really <laughs> so carry on going round again it's the sky the sky's never perfect so again and you're going over with other colours after so don't worry too too much Now, as you can tell, I'm wanting my sky to look like a sunset-ish. So, right, we'll class that one as that for now. And then we'll come in with the Spiced Marmalade. I think I'll use a different brush, literally, because I think that one's going to maybe break before long. Now, this one, I want more on the edges of the card. Because nearer to the sun, because of the brightness of the sun, you wouldn't get that dark effect quite so much. When you've got less ink on your brush, just bring it in a little tiny bit. Try and leave this halo around the card to a bit, around the acetate mask to a bit. If you have any um, tape or glue that's removable, you can, of course, makes it a bit easier. Makes it stops you having to hold your mask in place. You can tape it down and then remove it after. So I'm just going to do that. And there we have the, the, the um, thing effect. I think that one, I'm just going to blend it out a little bit if I can, I'm not sure that I, but having said that, that will get hidden by the, the houses anyway, so that, that again I'm not too, too bothered about. Right, just remove some of this excess ink, like I said normally I have a wet cloth but I've not got one and you don't want to break, see me break off to find a cloth, so we'll just use this for now. Now towards the bottom, where there would be um the the the, the watch cut the um brightness from the houses and strip lights and anything else that would be a little bit lighter so i'm going to use this fossilized amber one and just Blending it in and going along the, not the shoreline, the land line. I'm trying to think what I've got to say. Think what what um what it is that I'm trying to portray. And remember what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm trying to find it all in time for the videos. Proving a bit difficult. Now, as you can see here, you've got quite. I've got a bit of a white line, but I quite like that. That to me makes it look like the sun is really, really, and a little bit 3D-ish actually as well. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Right. So now I'm going to get me stamping platform. 
I do find that these, especially for scene stamps, are very, 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 very useful. So I'll just put those there for now. And again, bringing in the mask like we did before, it helps to know where you want to place it. So again, we're going to have the base of the tree at the bottom. Just some of the branches in the shadow of the, the, the sun. And I then, have I done this? No, I've done this the wrong way around. Doesn't matter. If you find that you've put your acetate sheet the wrong way, doesn't matter. Just pick it up, turn it over. Nothing's a disaster. So lay your stamp roughly, doesn't have to be perfect, over your acetate sheet, which now it's stuck, you can add a pinch move with your acetate sheet, and bring over, press down to collect your stamp on the lid, just move these out the way, so that you can see what I'm doing, and you might have noticed that it's picked up the acetate layer, so remember to move that, because I didn't the other day and I finished up getting um, the black, the black ink all over my acetate little layer, which that was, it didn't do it any harm, but it wasn't fun clearing it all off. So now, little, little bursts of stamp, stamping, and hopefully it will make it this nicely stamped and press. I press quite a little bit for, um, wait for a few seconds really before you lift it up because when it's, especially when the stamping is going on the inks, it needs to absorb into the, the paper and even, even when using a stamp press I do this because it just helps it to absorb the ink or rather the ink to absorb it. And as you can see, that's stamped fairly nicely first time. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'll just clean off my stamp and pop that to one side for now. Excuse my arms if you keep seeing the arms, but I've got quite a few stamps and things on the go, and ink pads on the go, and I can't really just hide everything. Right, now then, next I want my dwellings. So, make sure that your card's square and straight on your, um, on your platform. Uh, just right, I forgot to show you at the, at the beginning of when I was introducing what I was going to use. I have actually stamped onto some, well we call it post-it notes, you could use copy paper. And basically they're very thin paper and along one edge they've got the removable sticky tape. These are fantastic when you're wanting to do a mask, a masking effect. So I'll show you how I've used that for the, what I'm doing. So, And just so that they didn't get um, broken, bent, all out of shape. I've just stuck them onto a piece of me on acetate just to keep them where I know where they are and everything. So taking your Bumble Lodge stamp again using your acetate as a reference I'm going to just move this over a little bit because it's a bit too close to the side. Because I want to put my lodge about there. Now then, my acetate on this one is bending for some reason or other. So I found if I just use the magnets to hold it down while I place the stamp on the top that also helps so using exactly the same 
steps we did before. This one, because this, this acetate was bending, hasn't stuck to my stamp this time. So we're going to remove it anyway. So that's not a problem. And actually it reminds you that it's actually on there. So get your black ink, which like I said, in my case is the VersaFine Clear Nocturne. You can use others. Stamp, ink it up in small steps like I did before, showed you with the tree and press down and hold it for a few seconds. Hopefully that means that this is stamped correctly the first time. If not, we can ink it up again and because it's on the stamping platform, go over it again. Yes, as you can see, it's not stamped there. So that isn't, because it's on a stamping platform, that isn't a problem. So, just caught the top of the, the stamp there, so I'll just get rid of that. And I'll press down on the bit where it wasn't stamped. That is just the other thing you have to be careful. It, it, it's not helping because I'm trying to video it and keep it in camera shot and at you know the same time try and show you what I'm trying to do. Probably if I wasn't on video I'd have... Um... No, that's, that's fine that time. We've got the detail or as much detail as we need because we can always just highlight that with a little bit of pen work after. So might not i think this was an oxide wasn't it yeah and they don't always like to go on that quite as much i don't know why the ordinary inks seems to take it better i don't know right so now comes the masking part so i've stamped like i say the stamp onto a piece of post-it note or copy paper whatever you have and we line it up with the stamp underneath and I press it down where I've got the glue bit and then taking the other stamp set which is Toad Lodge love this stamp set it's so cute and just place that to one side for a minute and again using your acetate little bit and judging because I don't want this to overly look like another dwelling I want it to look more like it's the outhouse of, a, of the dwelling that's already there so again to keep this in place a minute I'm just going to use that magnet so again place your stamp on top of your acetate sheet that's got the picture of the stamp on that comes from living your stamps and again because I've used the magnet it's kept that in place and taken it off the the stamp so we'll try and see how this goes because again this is also on the oxide so we'll just have to see how it goes so this gives you a um, different perspective as well because you've got the tree from the bottom you've got this larger lodge a little bit higher up and then you've got the it is another lodge like I say but I'm called classing it as a sort of outhouse um, fancy shed <laughs> don't know what to call it 
I'm going to lift that up and see how that's stamped. Now, like I said, I think it's not stamping absolutely perfectly because it's on the oxide ink. And, like I said, it is a bit of a of a design flaw for some reason for that. It, um, but there are ways to get around it. You can just go over it with a black, um, well it has to be resist, uh, run resist, but some sort of black ink that won't run, just to fill in the detail that's got missing. So that's that. And to be honest, I quite like the fact that some bits are missing because to me it makes it look a little bit like a bit rustic. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. A little bit rustic, um, like which, let's face it, a shed would be. So then you remove your mask. Like I say, I place it on this acetate because it just just means that then it's it's for another day. It doesn't matter that you you stamping goes over on this just let it dry you can use it again it doesn't matter and then you've started there with your seam so I think now um, I'm going to leave this as part one because by the time you've watched this you've probably watched enough for, for now and I will do part two where I've finish it off and do some colouring and the final details. So that's all for now. Bye.